this week you, you made it you made a comment on one of our shows about how you would if you were running the defense this week, you would try to because we were talking about how when we played Buffalo, first half of the scene, like we were kind of sitting back. Yeah. And having we had a lot of DBs out on the field, we were just kind of sitting back and I don't know. I mean, we were like we were trying to get a pressure without having to blitz anything. Second half, we obviously changed up and you know had a spy and, and all that stuff. Um but with this week, you had said that if you if if it was up to you, you would want to make Lamar have to throw the ball. Mm-hmm. Yes. So and and what would you and I thought that was interesting. What what would you if you were spags in the situation? How would you kind of game plan this defense this week? Uh, you know, it it, it has to. You, you got to pressure. You got to pressure these guys. Uh, so if I'm game planning going in, uh, what what spags does well is he brings guys that you don't see is coming. Okay. Uh, in, in in Houston, they kind of telegraphed those guys because Houston was like the least uh, blitzing team before they got to the Ravens playing in the game. And so they weren't quite used to like the complexities of the blitzes and guys from, from coming from different spaces, different places like that. But that's that's bag special. And so when you do bring blitzes, when you do have guys come up, then you back out maybe in coverage, uh, that's a difficult task to deal with for any quarterback, any quarterback. So – uh, it messes up the line, their count. It messes up who they're going to get. Uh, and so if we do those things, it, I think we'll be successful. I really do. Um, and so what you do is the same thing. Then you get, you know, your coverage guys. McDuffie, you get Sneed getting, uh, you know, OBJ, and you get them getting on Bateman, and you get them getting on Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is their guy, okay? He's a fast twitch, uh, f- you know, really good receiver, okay? And you just got to stop him. Well. But what do you do? We learn, get physical. And we got the best physical corners in the league. Okay. That's what the one on one, we do it best, better than anybody else. So I, I think Spags are going to let those guys play. He's going to let the coverage guys play. And we're going to try to come after you. And we'll, 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 wherever the car, we'll let the cars fall where they may. We'll let the cars fall where they may. Okay. Uh, but I, I like, I like at least my thought pro- process of going in, like, why not bring pressure? Because the thing is, if you bring pressure early, then you got them thinking about it all the time. But then next time, what you do is you act like you're bringing pressure, and then you drop back, okay? And you sit back and get you know catch your football. Look, we know Lamar will get the ball up too. We we know a joker. He'll 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 turn over one or two to a, to a defense, and so hopefully our, our defense will catch one or two in in, in their hands. Uh, almost had one last week, didn't quite get it, but hey. Might have one this week or two this week. Uh, so we're looking for Chris Jones to have a big game. Okay. Uh, he didn't have any 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 sacks last week. Uh, we didn't have no, any, any sacks. Uh and so let's 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 rectify that, you know, with the pressure. Okay. That's what that does. That brings it up. You know, it starts out the process fast for Lamar. Lamar don't want to get the ball out of his hand fast and, and think faster to do things. You know, they got a lot of plays down the field unless they throw in the short to Zay they flowers. And so we'll have somebody pretty much sticky in his hip the entire time. So that's what it'll be. Yeah, I mean, just looking at their uh, – uh, as far as how many yards rushing we're allowing per game this year, 113 yards last week. Uh, Bills ran for 182 yards against us. And now a lot of people were saying, we, and we kind of mentioned this at post-game-wise, um, that this game against Buffalo was a nice kind of like warm-up to playing – the, the the Ravens offense we kind yeah. of mentioned that a little bit because because of the kind of dual threat action that Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson both pose yeah. but when looking at their offenses they're not they're not that similar as far as, far as like kind of the, the, the vertical threat I mean you don't really see them throwing bombs like like the way jo- like the way Josh Allen was trying to the second half of that game you don't really see Baltimore doing that they kind of matriculate the ball down the field and they have big plays where Lamar, where Lamar runs for 30 40 yards or you know Gus Everett breaks one out for 40 yards yeah, but that's the reason I think Lamar gets out running because nobody gets open. And so, you know, some of the routes that they do run, you know, is is kind of the uh, the intermediate routes uh, that does take a little time. And so I don't think they're really a quick, you know, a, a quick scheme guys, you know, getting the ball out uh, immediately. Uh, but he does look down the field and make plays. And so it, it, the difference is, uh, and, and I don't really, you know, necessarily agree with this i think he's a he's a he's a good passer with the football but if you want to pick your poison i'd rather him pass the football than run with it uh, that's what i'd rather him do 
And so we know he has a strong arm, but some balls will sell on him. Um, you know, I, as far as those are the things that like, okay, his strong suit, what do you want to play on the strong suit? The strong suit is as obviously running with the football. Okay, he's he's a dangerous man, probably one of the most dangerous men to have a football in his hand running with it uh, since Michael Vick. Okay, and so uh, what do you you, you got to you got to eliminate that? You got to negate negate it. You have to, and it has to do bringing pressure. It has everybody else sitting back, the, the ones that need to be back. I say five because I think bringing six is going to be the key. Uh, just playing uh, pass coverage. All right, let the big dogs eat outside. Let them go. Let you get on Zay Flowers. Get physical with him. Get physical with OBJ. He don't like it either. Uh, he, he, you know, he's too Hollywood. He, he don't like those things. Um, <laughs> he, he doesn't. And so you get in their face, man. You just play ball. Okay. You you got you got to. And this look, this is the playoffs too. It's one and done. You 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 put everything out on the field. You leave it all out on the field. Don't worry about a play coming back to you. You make it right now. That's what you do. You make this thing happen right now. And so um, this is for all the marbles, man, Get, getting into it, going to the Super Bowl. And and I, and like I said, with, with what we have coaching staff-wise with Spags and, and Andy, I'll take him all day. John, ain't, he ain't chopped liver, but, you know, shoot, we, we, we got some, you know, Super Bowl champions over on the side. Shoot, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, – you know, experience in these games. So uh, they'll have those guys ready. And, and look, and I know the Ravens will be ready too, okay? The entire city is ready. We understand it's going to be a hostile environment. We don't care about none of that. You know what I said last night on the spaces? I said, when we go to Baltimore, we're looking to get crab cakes and chin straps. That's what we're doing. Crab cakes and chin traps. That, that, that's period. That's what we're trying to do. Pure and point blank. That's it. We ain't, like I said, we ain't dodge nobody. And I go back to what I was talking about, the wheelbarrow, getting into the wheelbarrow, right? I think these guys are ready. They're already in the wheelbarrow. They like playing for one another. They like each other. There's a lot of love in the locker room, man, and there's a lot of passion going on. And so when you start seeing these guys, how they really just kind of relate to one another, they want to win for each other. Not saying that Baltimore doesn't, but it's going to come down to the team that wants it the most, Right? You got two hungry teams. We do, Marcus. It's two hungry teams. Um, well, I seen last week that uh, the Chiefs and the Bills, and I, hello, I said this, uh, was like the highest rated game of the most viewership. Everybody wanted to see it. Everybody wanted to see it. Well, guess what? We got another, another big bill ticket game coming on because everybody wants to see Lamar and Patrick and what they can do. How they can, you know, will their teams to win? Uh, I just think that we got a better wheeler, you know, wheeler of the football than they do. So, and and also too, I think people want to tune in to see the uh, the Taylor Swift concert that is a Chiefs football game now. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a little added, a little juice to it. Yeah, yeah, come on, you know, Taylor's gonna be there. You know, Jason Kelsey's gonna be there. So it, it'll be a good time, man. Everybody's gonna be there for this one. I'm telling yeah. you, everybody's gonna be there for this one. I had a few, uh, you know, I, I'm in the D- D.C. area, so, like, I had a few um, girls that, that I know message me because I'm, like, I guess I'm a token Chiefs fan around here. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they, sent, they sent me the um, this thing, oh, uh, Taylor Swift coming to, uh, uh, concert coming to Baltimore at the Chiefs game this weekend. Only, tickets only $600 for, like, you know, nosebleed seats. And I'm like, oh, only $600. I was like, yep. Yeah. I was like, good luck. You can uh, you can <laughs> enjoy that. I'll be enjoying that from my, my home. So Right, right. If you're just going to one of those things and paying six hundred dollars just to go watch Taylor Swift from the box or whatever, I mean, my gosh, you need, you need to do a little something more with your time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey man. <laughs> oh, no. Imagine that. Imagine paying six hundred dollars just to go and, and watch a box. Um, I, 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 look, I, I've always said this. Um, I I can appreciate talent and what people do. Uh, and like you said, I'm not paying six hundred dollars to see nobody, okay. Um, and I guess you know it is that like this, uh, people come become in in awe of others because of the things that they are able to achieve, um, you know. But Taylor Swift is she's a person like anybody else. She's just a very talented person. She does some things a lot of people cannot do, uh, mm-hmm. and she should be celebrated for that. For sure. Paying six hundred dollars just to see in a box ain't happening. Sorry. 
I, I nope, can't see it. But cheering on uh, all the all the all the while doing the same thing, still cheering on. Love that she's a Chiefs fan. Love that she's supporting her boyfriend, sitting up there with the Kelsey family. I love it all. I love it all. all right. So yeah. yeah. And you mentioned um playing in Baltimore. Uh, this is a, a, something I know just from you know being around here and stuff. You know, people always say like Ravens fans are probably some of the rowdiest fans. They don't get the credit that how rowdy they are, um, especially when opposing uh, fan bases come there. I've heard I've heard really some some awful stories, and obviously any fan base you go, any stadium you go to, you'll hear some really bad stories. You always hear you always hear the bad ones. You're gonna hear the good ones. But like I, I've heard from my some of friends who are Steelers fans who've gone to Baltimore. And they said they've seen fights up the wazoo all the time whenever they go there. Um, my brother, who's a Raider fan, he went to a Raiders uh, Ravens game a couple years back, and he said it was pretty miserable experience as far as what what he what he faced with the the fans there. Um, and he's a Raiders fan; it's really not much bad blood there. Well, I guess there is if you count the Syracuse attack on Rich Gannon back in the day. Um, but uh, what, what in, in your experience playing at Baltimore? Um, what 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 what's the kind of the feeling you get in playing in front of that that fan base? Uh, you know, I, I obviously I, I I was able to experience it when uh, uh, Ray Lewis and those guys were playing, and you know it was very rowdy then. And Baltimore's a hard city; it's a hard city. Uh, you know that Ravens flock is they're, they're something else; they are. But I I don't look. I, I used to go to Oakland, okay, and. Uh, they're they're not as bad as Oakland was, by no means. I'm sure they got a, they have a great fan base out there. They do, uh, you know. They got a couple of championships, uh, and and the thing is, they, uh, you know, they know how to celebrate it. They come out. They they do. They come out, <clears throat> and you'll see Raven fans here and there, different places. Uh, matter of fact, my uh, my nephew. He's out there, and he's always I'm, 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 out, I'm like I'm shocked, but you know he he brought <laughs> he brought my grandson a uh, Lamar jersey, <laughs> and I said, oh, that's not gonna happen. We we ain't gonna have that. And that's a couple of years ago. And he, I was like, yeah, nah. I was like, listen, uh, we and I wish I had his, his jersey here, but I got him a I got him a my home's jersey. <laughs> I got my grandson. I'm like, this, this is this is what we rock around here. Okay, I just want you to understand that. I get you a Ravens fan because you live in Baltimore right now. That ain't going to happen, okay? I love Lamar, okay? Don't get me wrong. I love Lamar. But when when we talk about walking around this crib, over this house, over this castle, it's going to be Chiefs. That's what it's going to be. Chiefs, and you, you might see filtered here every once in a while, maybe like a, maybe a Philly thing, you know, just because, you know, I got drafted with Philly, right? right. I got pictures of Philly. And I'm, you know, of course, me and I got, you know, the uniform and stuff like that. And my family is still kind of loyal, some members, to Philly because that's the first first uh, team that took me. They the one that, that, that brought your boy in. But yeah. other than that, hey, man, is we are we rocking cheese over here, baby. That's all we <laughs> doing. But the flock is good, man. I, I like the Ravens. I like the Ravens. Uh, it, it's going to be a hostile environment. They got a lot to cheer for. Uh <laughs> The Chiefs, man, they they done played everywhere. No matter where they go, ain't even, the 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 crowd ain't even gonna be a factor. If you can go up there to Bills Mafia, okay, by all measures of the word of being crazy, that is what the Chiefs were able to experience. Yeah, I'm sorry, Baltimore, but you know we just not gonna be shook by y'all. Yeah. No, just not by the twelfth man. Okay, or your flock and them, them little uh, crows running around. Oh, I'm sorry, Ravens. <laughs> no, it, it's true. Man. Going from, and I'm not saying anything about about Baltimore's fan base, but going from playing at B- Buffalo last week and yeah. then coming and playing at Orchard Park and then coming to Baltimore. I mean, what we what we experienced last week. This is going to be like you know like a minor league game comparatively to what we just had last week in, in Buffalo. Like comparatively for the for the players, I mean what that what that was last week was, I mean they thought that was like a, 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 like a precursor to the Super Bowl last week, and that's how the fans were treating it, and also oh, yeah. with the weather and all that stuff too with it. Yeah, about snowballs. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, seriously. 
Yeah, I, look, they're they gonna have, like I said, they're gonna have everybody in house. Ray and all this, you know, crew is gonna be there. They're gonna bring all the players out. Um, you know, ba- Baltimore is a good city. It's a good city. I always enjoy the city uh, for what they give. Uh, the crowd's gonna be in it, but the Chiefs, none of that's gonna matter. It's not. It's, they're not like you say. They, they've we, we done played. You know the, the the biggest fan bases. Okay, the most hostile of environment. They done played in all of those things. Okay. Yeah. This is no different. It's no different. I don't think it's going to be any bigger. Yeah. And like you said, we're coming to Baltimore, and like, like the old Wedding Crashers line. We're going to take the crab cakes and crab cakes and football, baby. We're going to take both of them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and chin straps, like I said. You know? Chin straps. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, Subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.